So, Christopher, we, we're talking again about parents and the process of awareness in supporting the style of parenting and the role of parenting. Now, one of the most important things in this thing called awareness is how can or how would you suggest or see the role of a parent when they're observing that their child is behaving in a certain way, right? That they can see that perhaps their child has a behavior that they do not like. What traditionally happens is parents go and point a finger and say, my child's naughty, my child's this and that, something has to change. And in our understanding of parenting, there's a slightly different perspective, right? Which is the view that we're starting to see our children as mirrors of ourselves. At the same time, parents don't initially want to stand in that space to see that maybe what's going on is also a reflection of what they're contributing to that. So I thought it might be a great opportunity to open up what are your insights into that and how do you see that playing out? It all goes back to this whole question of awareness. And the biggest one of all, of course, is self-awareness, because that's where it all starts. It is probably one of the most, if not the most difficult process to undertake, certainly one of the most difficult processes to undertake, and it's often very uncomfortable, which is why too often we are so uncomfortable around our children, because as you quite rightly pointed out, they act as absolutely extraordinary mirrors for us, and we can see in them reflections of our own behaviour. Tempered, of course, and this very often adds an extra dimension to it, tempered, of course, by their own personalities, because they are not carbon copies of us. However, for me, in, in my philosophy, there's a very important energy at work here. When we arrive on the planet, there is the common wisdom that we arrive here, as they say, tabula rasa, clean slate. I find that concept quite extraordinary, and perhaps that could be a discussion for another time. Not now. Uh, we certainly, in my book at any rate, don't arrive here tabula rasa. We arrive here uh, filled with a whole uh, potpourri, a mixture of ideas, and above all, a game plan for ourselves. And again, as you will know, one of the tenets of my philosophy is that we choose our parents with great accuracy. Again, perhaps it's uh, a topic for another discussion at some time. So when we arrive here, we look at these giants who do not treat us terribly well, but nonetheless, these giants are our example. Now, in simplistic terms, and it is a bit simplistic, I get there are only two things that we lack when we arrive here on the planet. Just two. One is experience, because we haven't gotten any yet, and under experience, knowledge, etc., etc., how to make, make our way through this highly complex physical world in which we now find ourselves. And the other thing, of course, is a big body. We, we don't have one of those either. So here we look at these giants, and we say, well, they're successful. They might not have any money, but money for us in those early years is meaningless at any rate. They might not have any social status, but that too is meaningless at any rate. We chose these people to foster us, to nurture us through those early years. And here they are, successful. They've got the two things that we lack. Experience. One might look at it with a critical eye from early and say, well, not much experience, but from a child's eye, experience, lots of it. And they've got a big body. Therefore, what they must be doing must be correct. So therefore, I'll copy it. And I'll put my own stamp on it. Because I am an individual. I'm not actually like my parents. And this process for parents can be frightening and highly uncomfortable. And unless the parent has an own very high level of his own foibles of his own weaknesses, of his own strengths, um, so that he can stand back from the situation with his child and say, aha, this is what's going. And unless, and we were talking about this last time, unless he's uh, absorbed some very clever techniques on how to deal with this, the parent becomes a total victim of the child. And then one must ask, and one often does, 
and you see it, I see it, we see it here at the school on a daily basis. Who's actually running the show? The child or the parent? And far too often, for me, it looks as though the child is the puppet master and the parent is the puppet. This is not that difficult to change. Again, we go back to the level of self-awareness. And that requires an ability to step back from the situation, apply some learned techniques, and then work together with the child. So what would you say is the definitive moment that a parent starts realizing that they are possibly the cause to a large degree of also what's going on? In other words, they so in- intricately entwined in the behavior that their child is exhibiting as opposed to that this child is just exhibiting something due to their personality type and, well, that's just the way it happens. Mm. Mm. I don't think that there's an easy answer to that question because... The question of awareness is one of these tricky things. And some people go through life uh, living their living their life with that wonderful phrase, ignorance is bliss. And yeah, there is a certain am- amount of truth in it. If, you, if you're ignorant of something, then you don't have to deal with it. In fact, you can't deal with it. You've just disempowered yourself. So awareness is a tricky thing. It's not a comfortable thing. And an awful lot of people shy away from it. So when one speaks of the moment in time it's not going to happen when the child is one or two or three or four or five or when the parent is 20, 30, 40 or 50 it's going to happen when the parent sits down and asks himself one very simple question and I work with this a lot what on earth is going on here what's the reality of this particular situation then the techniques can start to kick in. But until the parent actually asks that situation, for so long as the parent simply, as you said it a little earlier, simply points the finger at the child, then the parent actually disempowers himself from dealing with the situation. So, a so what would you say then is for a parent who, who might be watching this, for example, and thinking, yeah, oh, that sounds interesting, what would support them in accelerating their awareness and growth in this to see that maybe they can actually do something about it as opposed to the traditional pointing of a finger? I think the first thing is to realize that we are, and I'm I'm painting with a broad brush, hopelessly ill-qualified to become parents. And I speak from my own experience. And as you know, I'm the father to five children. And it is only in the realm of the last two, when I was developing some sort of self-awareness, that I can claim that I had some kind of right to have children. That's the first realization, is that, and this will doubtless upset people, a very, very small percentage of people out there are actually qualified to have children. We do it, and quite frankly, at this point in time in our so-called civilization, we are reaping the whirlwind that we have sown. It's time to change it. It starts with us. We need to get busy with ourselves. Only then can we start to get busy with our children.